Hello everyone, James here. This video is a result of popular demand, but not to worry, I have more on the way. So a couple weeks ago, I hit up my boy Yeeson Cinema and asked him if he wanted to make a Lethal Company video with me, and he agreed. We talked and laid out the rules and decided that we would have 24 hours to make a 5 second animation, which sounds like a lot of time, but in reality it would run out a lot faster than I anticipated. The theme was the video game Lethal Company, which is a multiplayer horror game where you and however many cool friends you have are employed by a lethal company and tasked with visiting a harsh and unforgiving moon and retrieving very important loot, like large axles, rubber duckies, and stop signs. You can sell these to your boss after visiting three moons, but if one of you dies on the moon or at the selling station- no. No. Let's just say there are a lot more dangerous things on these moons than the weather itself, and you may just get traumatized after watching all your closest friends get murdered and or kidnapped by some eldritch whore. I had some funny ideas for this video inspired by my friend's terrible deaths, but I wanted to find a way to combine them all. For one, there's getting betrayed by a friend with a stop sign. Another thing is falling off a poorly constructed walkway or getting kidnapped by the Bracken. My idea was to combine these by creating a diorama viewed from the side, showing all of the deaths happening at once. This would create a bit of a challenge as I would have to animate all these characters and create a larger environment. I decided my first step would be to create a basic layout of the environment, which took longer than it should have because I was used to the Maya controls, and yes, I am learning Maya, and I will make a video about why, just, just please. The boolean modifier helped a ton with creating even doorways and shapes for the labyrinth. Once I had a basic layout figured out, I imported models from this industrial pack by production crate and put them around my scene, trying to make it as accurate as possible based off the game using a lot of reference images. So far I'd used about 6 hours, 3 of which were brainstorming and remembering the controls again. The next step was animation, which at first seemed pretty daunting because of the amount of characters I wanted to animate, but luckily I have Mixamo for that. For any of you who don't know much about Mixamo, allow me to explain my workflow. In this case, I have a pre-built armature for my model, but let me delete it and just pretend it's not there. So, I have a character that I want to apply animations to, but I don't have a rig or the time to rig it. First of all, export your character as an FBX. From there, we can drag or drop directly into the import file to Mixamo by clicking Upload Custom Character. From there, we can drag and drop or directly import the file into Mixamo by clicking Upload Custom Character and selecting our FBX. From there, follow the instructions and if your character doesn't have major issues and is a humanoid bipedal, you should be able to click and drag the joints onto your character and after a little while, you'll have a nice rigged character all hooked up and ready to go. From here, you'll be able to choose from a massive library of pre-made animations for your character, all ready to go. You can just select whatever one you like and download it as an FBX and import it into your scene. I use Mixamo animations in this challenge for the guy falling over in the top right as well as the guy waving down to his friend. And of course, the guy hitting the yonky splanky over there in the corner. The rest was hand animated using the rig that was attached to the character. This part used a significant amount of my time and it, I was down to 12 hours out of the 24 already. After animating the characters, it was time to apply textures to the environment as well as more details. The door was a custom model by me and considering the art style of the game, it was relatively easy to get it to close to the game. Uh, then I worked on the textures of the environment, such as metal panels for the walls as seen in the games and I even made these cool see-through panel textures for this walkway that you can't even see in the final render. There was a lot of UV mapping involved in these steps because I wanted to get these textures looking as right as possible. For the lighting, I brought in these cool lights from the production crate pack and for the outside light through the doors, I had this cool area light and a plane with an emission. I did some more texturing for the floors and tried to use the height map but for whatever reason it didn't work on the displacement. Soon we were looking pretty good but something was still missing. Time was running out and I saw I had 6 hours left. I hopped on Lethal Company and, and realized I was missing a big part of what made the game so scary, namely volumetrics aka fog. So what I did next was make a big cube wrapping around my scene and gave it a volume scatter input for the volume. Now we're pretty much good to go, I just added more details from the industrial pack and finalized some animation. After talking to Yeeson, he gave me a look at his render which made me feel a little insecure about my environment but I figured I might have a chance if I can give mine a little pop in After Effects. After rendering out as a PNG sequence, which took around 3.5 hours, I imported into After Effects and got started. The first thing I did was add lens flares everywhere. I thought it might look good, including the lights at the top and the flashlights when they were facing the camera. Next I color graded my scene, trying to bring out the highlights and up the contrast. Then I just added some film grain and called it a day. I finished with just 4 hours to spare, which I spent sleeping. Here's the final round. After finally getting some sleep, I hopped into a call with Eason to compare and discuss our renders. And by the way, dude, as you were saying, no noise. 
This like is actually Whoa. so clean. Is this, is this okay, I tried. Okay, so this is K cycles, so it's a little different. Um, it's basically just a little faster, and it has like some easier settings to access. Uh, of course, the downside is that it's like a paid add-on and it doesn't always work as well. Uh, so I had to figure out a bunch of settings. I tried rendering at 10,000 samples and it God still damn. was noisy, like still. So I had to like basically mess with the noise threshold and do all this stuff and it just took forever, that dude. Insane. I know. Bro, take a guess at how many samples mine was rendered with. I'm gonna say, okay, so there is a little noise showing up on like one of some of the backpacks. I but I, did you did you use a denoiser before I guess? Uh, I did use a denoiser. Okay, yeah. so I I'm used, gonna say um, I like I want to say like 300, but maybe it's a thousand. I'm not sure. 32. Oh my gosh, really? Yeah. What denoiser did you use? OptiX? Huh? Uh, yeah, OptiX. Okay. OptiX denoiser. Yeah, dude. It's like I mean, yeah. <laughs> I wow, I would have never guessed that. So I, I imagine your render times were pretty good on that then. Yeah, no, it's like it's like. 15 seconds per frame. Oh also, yeah, like, I was able to get, I was able to get turnarounds pretty fast. Like, I definitely could have. I was thinking about re-rendering it because I usually do like 128 mm -hmm. on my films, um, like 128 to 256. That's like what I did for like all my other short films. But like, just I guess because of the sort of like found footagey sort of aspect of it, I was like, oh well, like it's like definitely would be better. But I don't think that it takes away from it as much having noise as it usually would, just because mm -hmm. it's kind of like it's, it's like found footagey already. So I just kind of left it as. A, Definitely not because I was lazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> and that's about it. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I will be having monthly uploads, so expect a video or two in February and more in March. I'm dreading the next video because I do have some explaining to do. Oh. <laughs>